This is a tutorial on using Boom, the drum sequencer or step sequencer that Pro Tools has. And what we're going to do is we're going to see some basic ways it works, setting up patterns in here and triggering them in the timeline here. Then we're going to see how we can actually play them into the computer in real time and record each of the individual notes. Finally, I'm going to show you a way to enter these things in just by clicking with the mouse or using the step input. And so, depending on how you like to work, one of these ways might be the best for you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to um, we're going to create a pattern in here and we're going to trigger it. So if you note here, it says here, pattern 1-C3. And then down over here, it says pat select or pat cell for pattern select. That's what we want on it right now. Look what happens if I click 2 here. It goes up to 2, C sharp 3. 3, it goes to 3, pattern 3, D3. These letter names here and numbers just talk about which note will trigger all these patterns to happen if you play it on a keyboard. So if you look down over here on this keyboard, I see here it says a 3 on this, in this note. This is a C. So there's a 3 there. And the note right above it, right here, that's so that's C3, this is C sharp 3, this one's D3. Every next one you see go up on the pattern, it's going to be placed on one of these different notes. So if I click that pattern here, uh, I actually need to put it in uh, notes view to do that. So I'm going to click this pattern. So I can select the patterns I want and I can trigger them with these notes. If I actually click notes in here, it'll, it'll cause Boom to play them back. And since these whole patterns are one measure long, what I'll do is I'll set the grid of entering notes to be one bar or one measure long. I'm going to use this tool right here, this pencil tool to enter them in. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the piece. I'm going to hit this little bar to go back. I'm going to hit, just click on a note and that's going to automatically make it one bar long because I have it selected here for one bar in the grid mode. So that's going to be the whole length of this. And if I hit play now, it plays through this particular pattern C3. If I put it up in the very next one, it's going to change it to the pattern 2 as you can see here pattern 2 so I'll go back to the beginning oops let's go back to the very beginning click that okay now watch what happens here first pattern once it hits here next pattern do another one too So those are the preset patterns that are already built in there, but I don't have to use those patterns. If I want my own pattern, um, I can click with this thing saying pat select on a particular number. Here I'm going to click on 5. It's got a built-in pattern, but I don't like it, so I'm going to hit the clear button. Now all this stuff is moved out of the way. So I can click in these little dots here and enter my pattern that way or I can enter them here on these steps. I'm going to show you both. Now that I've selected the fifth, um, fifth pattern slot, I'm going to edit that pattern. Pat select, go to pat, edit. Okay, I'm going to click on kick. And now every quarter note beat or every four of these things, you can see by these lines here, I'm going to enter a note. If I hit play now on this little part here, it's just a play for the boom object, not for the whole timeline. Plays them back. And you can see that it also puts them up here. See? Now maybe I want to have snare drum and a clap on each. Really hard, hard hitting thing. Oops, I don't want them all there, but let's get rid of that.
And in between, I want a closed hat, kind of small sound. again okay that's okay I could put other stuff in and continue it on I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep it there for the moment now if I click on this note here which happens to be the same one as this five it'll switch to that pattern I made when it gets there so here pattern three four now my pattern 5 will come up. So that's one way I can make patterns. I can hit um, a place where I want to enter a pattern, some slot, using this pattern select. I can hit slot 6 for instance and I can clear out the pattern they have, go to the pattern edit and then you know start putting stuff in there I can put it in this bottom part here or up here. I'm just randomly putting out a junk in here to see if some chaotic thing sounds okay. Probably not, but let's hear. Ah, something's okay, something's not so much, but now I have that pattern. And if I click one of the notes on the MIDI timeline, um, it'll trigger this pattern to play whenever I click that note. So that's one way to do things. It'll trigger a whole measures pattern. There's going to be times when you don't want to have an entire pattern played back one measure at a time like this. Maybe you want to play every note in real time. So if I want to do that, um, if I play the lower notes below, below this three here on the piano, here you're hearing individual notes because they're below that octave of, of piano notes down below here. Um, and you're seeing them come out here. Here's one of them. Hit the next key. Right, so I'm gonna hit this into clips mode. I'm gonna hit record. Here's on the wrong mode at the moment. Record and play, and it, uh, let's give me a metronome cl click. Now I'm gonna play in real time. So I got some idea in there, some basic idea, and it's not perfect in time. That's fine. I'm going to click on it uh, with this selection tool. I'm going to go to event, time operations, no, event operations rather, quantize, and quantize it here at a 16th note. Hit apply. Then it's got this space here, this one measure space between the last note and my MIDI recording, and the space at the end here. I actually have an extra note here that's a little bit late too. So I'm going to trim that away. I'm going to click in this upper part here where it says Smart Tool, this little, this little um, section that goes like around the tools. And that changes what tool it is depending on where I am in the audio clip. So if I go to the right of it and kind of go just to the edge, it turns into this little, this little horseshoe thingy. And that means it'll let me trim it to the side. Um, right now it's going to trim it by a measure because I have that selected. So go like that, trim. Um, here I actually want to split it up first. So I click where I want. Turns into this, um, kind of looks like a weight or something. Um, this little icon here when, when you get in the middle of the track. Okay, that lets me select things so I could drag and select like that. Um, I guess I could just drag and select and delete that. That's one way. Hit delete. I'm going to undo that for a second though. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go to edit and hit um, I'm going to trim the clip so I'm going to trim it at selection and now it trimmed this whole little section out I'm going to hit delete get rid of that so now I have this one just click it and drag it over and after it gets done playing these patterns it's 
it's gonna play my actual written in pattern. Well, we don't want this click, right? So we'll hit mute. Okay, so that works for some things, but I might actually want to have even more control than playing in real time. Maybe I'm not so good at playing in timing. Um, so I want to go in, I'm going to go into notes mode here. Let's scroll down a bit so we can see what these lower notes are. Cause remember I said they're lower on the keyboard. I'm also going to hit Apple right bracket or hit this thing here to zoom in on these notes, make them a little bit easier to see. Um, and I don't have a whole lot of grid lines here, so it's hard to see where my beats are. Okay. So I'm going to go to grid here and I'm going to say like eighth note or maybe 16th note. I have too much information here too about time, seconds and all this type of stuff. I don't need to see those. So I'm going to go to view rulers and minimal and yeah. And then I'm going to just, just bars and beats is cool with me. I already hit that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I have that. Um, and now I can see which bar I am in and uh, which beat I'm in. I might make it a little bit uh, finer grid too. So I can see each 16th note long. So then what I can do is I can click individually notes into here. And whatever this note value is up here. In this case, it's 16th note, but it could be I could make a smaller one, eighth note, fourth note. I could make um, triplets, kind of where you have three notes happen in the time of one note. Um, I could do lots of different things here, and precisely enter them in. Here, I'm gonna click some faster notes. Be not that sound. No. There we go. Oops. If I hold down like I did there, click down and drag, it'll make a longer note. I can make some interesting variation. Okay, so now I have this. And that gives some cool little sounds in these ones, right? Some fast variations. I like that. It gives different types of control. If I want to further do that, um, I can also go up to here and I can um, go to event, event operations and step input. And step input lets me to say, um, I just click a note on my keyboard, on my MIDI keyboard, and then whatever I have selected here, it makes that type of note. I want some super fast notes that I can enter really quickly. So I'm going to hit this. And just on my keyboard, type. And it'll keep on hitting those notes one after another in there. Maybe I'll make them even faster. I'll make these triplet ones. And it says three in the time of two. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it four in the time of two. And now five in the time of two. So that'll change things up. Let's see what that sounds like. I think it adds some interest to that. Meanwhile, I could have some other notes going in here. I can, you know, go. be really great for build-ups and things like that in dance music. When I'm done with all that, I can zoom back out, I can put it into clips mode, things like that, but uh, it gives you a lot of variations in the types of sounds. Some basic thumping rhythm, some more open type of rhythm, organically made from playing here, and then over here, much more out there electronic thing.